we shouldn't jump to conclusions here. But it is very human to go out there and look at the different pieces of news and try to form a map in our heads that makes sense. Yesterday, we made this video talking about how Carter Hart took a leave of absence from the Philadelphia Flyers just a day after Dylan Dubé took a leave of absence from the Calgary Flames. Today's video, we're going over two more leave of absences, or no, three more from two different teams. Because, firstly, we had ourselves the Ambry Piota website. This is HC Ambry Piota in the Swiss League, where it was announced earlier today that former Ottawa Senator Alex Formanton has been granted an indefinite leave of absence for personal reasons and has allowed Formanton to return to Canada. Another tweet about the situation from Frank Saravelli. Ottawa Senators reserve list player Alex Formanton is returning to Canada according to Swiss club HC Amber Piotta and has been granted an indefinite leave of absence from the team. Formanton was a member of the 2018 Team Canada World Junior Team and has not played in the NHL since 2022. Now, these two things being put together in the same tweet, they could be related, they could not be. But with the news from yesterday that we had both Carter Hart and Dylan Dubé getting leave of absences and them also both being a part of that 2018 Canadian squad, it gets a little bit suspicious to see the timing of everything coming out at the same time. After this Ambry Piotta Formanton thing though, we had ourselves even more news of more players taking leave of absences. They are two players from the New Jersey Devils. Mike McLeod and Cal Foote have each requested and been granted indefinite leave of absences from their team. The club will have no further comment at this time. Now, what do all five of these players have in common? Well, You've probably guessed it by now. Take a look at the tweet made by Rick Westhead. The five members of the 2018 World Junior Hockey Team have been told to surrender to London, Ontario police to face charges of SA, the Globe and Mail reports, citing unnamed sources. The Globe reports the players who have not been charged yet have been given a set period of time to present themselves at London Police Headquarters. There also was another update posted by Pierre Lebrun. This is from The Athletic. It's a paywalled article. Five members from the Canadian 2018 World Junior Team have been told to surrender to police. And now we wait. Because there hasn't been any official thing, announcement yet. But of course, this is such a serious situation that for all of us in the public eye who are not a part of this, it puts to rest what was an ongoing investigation that we have been looking for answers for, for years. The 2018 thing that happened, literally, I mean, 2018 was six years ago. And when was the discourse about this entire situation opened up? Like, 2022, I want to say? That's kind of when I feel like we started talking about this. And so, it's been a long time coming. Over a year's worth of an investigation on this entire World Junior Hockey Team thing. And when it comes to the updates, I mean, having everything put together, this is where you start to have the difficult conversation. Katie Strang went out there and tweeted this. London police on the report that five former 2018 World Junior Team members have been told to surrender on charges of SA. We are unable to provide an update at this time. When there is further information to share regarding the investigation, we will be in contact with media outlets. Then... Katie said she had reached out to the NHL for comment. NHL Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly said there's nothing the league can say at this time. There also was Pierre Lebrun tweeting this out about the situation. I've also reached out to the NHL for comment. The league isn't commenting at this time. I'm guessing the NHL is waiting to see how things further evolve with London Police and the players in question. At some point, presumably, there will be NHL discipline on this as well, but we continue to wait on that too. Now, of course... This video is just a YouTube video. We're taking a look at five different players and guys and looking at a bunch of different tweets. This video is not concluding anything, but of course, when it comes to the two guys that we had seen yesterday, Carter Hart, Dylan Dubé, when it comes to Alex Formanton, when it comes to Mike McLeod and Cal Foote, the fact that all five of these guys, within the span of a few days of each other, and in the case of these two, and this guy, 
within a few hours, the fact that they all took indefinite leave of absences from their hockey teams and the fact that Formanton, for crying out loud, was granted the opportunity to leave the team and go back to Canada, it does not look good for these five guys when you talk about this situation in 2018. Here's a tweet from Rachel Dory. Here's what we know what to be true. Dubé took a leave from Calgary. Hart took a leave from Philadelphia. Formanton took a leave from Europe. McLeod and Foot were not at the New Jersey team event last night, but the team had not been issued a release. That was at 7 a.m. New post. There was indeed an indefinite leave of absence for both of these guys. And with this in mind, you know, I'm not coming to any conclusions here. Nothing's official. Nothing's been announced by the London police. But um, yeah, it's a very human thing to connect the dots in a very particular way. And I'm not going to go out there and say it directly, but I think y'all kind of know what happened here. To end things off, though, in this video, I wanted to bring up one more tweet. This is from Jeff Middleton. Maybe it's just me, but if it's true that Dubé left the Flames due to the Team Canada stuff, I think it's an awful look to put it under the guise of mental health and not just a leave of absence. It does a disservice to players who truly may be struggling with mental health. And I get it. There's a response here from Matthew that actually brings up a good point. So the thinking here is that people subject to criminal allegations can't simultaneously be struggling with their mental health. Don't condone what those players have done allegedly, but don't think it eliminates the possible mental health issues related or unrelated for Dubé. And then there are opposing replies saying, yeah, well, it's a disservice to all of us who suffer from anxiety, depression, and any other mental health issue. Now, I feel like for Dylan Dubé in particular, the fact that he has been bad this season and the fact that his struggles have been very, very clear, as we had talked about yesterday, 45 points last year, he's on pace for 12 points this year, just a super bad decline. And he has been kind of the whipping boy on social media and Twitter folks going out there crucifying Dubé because he's not good. This is what Rasmus Anderson said in regards to the Dylan Dubé departure from yesterday. It sucks to see, first, Oliver Shillington, who recently came back, and now Dylan Dubé. You've got to try to support them in any way you can. I think if you're struggling on the ice or off the ice, I think it's a good wake-up call for a lot of the Twitter monsters out there, too, that we are humans as well. Maybe think before you write. That comes with being a pro athlete, but it's never easy seeing someone struggle and then reading about it, too. It sucks. And so because Rasmus Anderson went out there and had this comment, and because Dylan Dubé has genuinely been struggling on the ice, I feel like there was already sort of an idea saying, all right, well, Dylan Dubé's leave of absence could be seen as, like, just coincidence. It could be. And I said that in the video yesterday, too, that, like, hey, this could be, at the end of the day, two guys taking separate leave of absences for two different reasons, because Carter Hart might have a family issue, Dylan Dubé might have mental health issues. Like, this is not necessarily coordinated. But this is just two. And then we had another one. And then we had two more. So now we have five. And five is just happening to be the same number of players of the 2018 World Junior Team that have been told to surrender to London, Ontario police to face the charges of SA. So, you know, I'm not going to go further than that. You know what, to end off this video, I guess we could do this just because it's, you know, covering our bases. Let's go out there and look at the Team Canada 2018 squad and just kind of go over some of these names. There were a lot of people on this list that very early on were exonerated because they had proof. Hey, I was like away. I was on vacation during the event that in which this crime took place. I think it was Victor Mete who was like the first one to be like, yep, I wasn't there. I was in another country and it was actually proven by his Twitter feed that he was gone. So there were multiple players here that were indeed confirmed to being unrelated to the crime that was committed. However, after a process of elimination and other players coming out and making their statements saying what it was that they said, yeah, no, I wasn't a part of this. I wasn't participating. There were still a select number of names that had the possibility of being involved. And I haven't been like super into keeping up with every intricate detail of this, but just having hockey subreddits and hockey social media feeds on in the background, like we see this pop up from time to time. 
these names, if they are the ones that are connected, it would align, unfortunately, with the information that we had received in the past or the lack thereof information we have seen in the past. So for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the leave of absences we had talked about yesterday. So Carter Hart, Dylan Dubé, plus Alex Formanton from today, plus the New Jersey Devils granting McLeod and Foot leave of absences too. I hope you enjoyed this video. I mean, I don't think you should have. I hope you didn't enjoy this video. So that's Charles and I and I and bye.